I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis in May 2008. I had IVIG in 2008 and 2009, but it wasn't working as well as they hoped. In April, I had a crisis where I fell on the ground in the living room while walking across. Then my mother had to help me get to the emergency room at Peterborough Regional. I was there for a few hours, but nothing got better. With consultation from the neurology team at SickKids, Peterborough Regional agreed to airlift me to SickKids in Toronto. They had to strap me to a stretcher so I wouldn't fall off. Then they wheeled the stretcher to the helicopter on the helicopter pad. They loaded myself on the stretcher into the helicopter my mother came with. When the helicopter took off, it was like being laying down on an elevator that was going straight up. When I was traveling between Peterborough and Sick Kids, it just felt like I was asleep in a car. When we got to Toronto, the helicopter landed on the roof of Sick Kids. They pulled the stretcher off of the helicopter and they rushed me down to emergency where I was admitted to the regular hospital. Once I got there, they did the usual vital stats. Heartbeat, temperature, blood pressure. They also did a number of tests just to see how much my muscles were working. The results were, they weren't working much at all. The doctors talked to my mother and had her strongly consider having the thymectomy that night. In the end, the doctors thought to have one last try with IVIG, so we were able to avoid a thymectomy in April. A thymectomy is an operation where doctors remove the thymus gland. Sometimes it makes myothenia gravis go into remission, and sometimes it doesn't. Even if a person with MG goes into remission after having a thymectomy, it may not be permanent. There are three different ways a surgeon can do a thymectomy. There's the transsternal, where they cut through the breastbone. There's the transcervical, that's where they go through a neck incision. Then there's the transthoracic, where they go through one or both sides of your chest. I've read, because of the increased technical demands, the transcervical and the transthoracic versions are done by only a few surgeons in North America. I was supposed to have a transcervical. The surgeon was going to slip my thymus out like a little sardine. A thymectomy is something not normally done on kids. That's because the thymus loses almost all of its functional capacity after a person's teenage years. The role of the thymus when you're a kid and a teenager is to educate the T cells in your body to a specific response where they then populate the lymphoid organs for storage and fill needed. Removing the thymus in adults does not affect their immune system because the thymus gland's job is done by that time. But it's a different story for kids and for teenagers. One of the jobs of the lymphoid organs has to do with the immune functions in defending the body against infection and the spread of tumors. The thymus and bone marrow are the primary lymphoid tissues involved in the production and early selection of lymphocytes. A lymphocyte is a kind of white blood cell. It's part of the vertebrate immune system. The three major types of lymphocyte are T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells or NK cells. NK cells can tell the difference between infected cells and tumors from normal and uninfected cells. They are named natural killer cells because when they find the infected cells and tumors, they release cell-killing granules that kill off altered cells. That's why they're called natural killer cells. T cells and B cells are the major cell components of the body's adaptive immune response. The principal function of B cells is to make antibodies. They eventually develop into memory B cells after activation by antigen interaction. In other words, B cells remember what they've done so they can do the same thing in the future. The T cells are a little bit more complicated. There are six different types of T cells, and how T cells are directed into particular subtypes is not very well understood. The six types of T cells are the helper T cell that helps B cells turn into plasma cells and help activate cytotoxic cells. The cytotoxic T cell destroys virally infected cells and tumor cells.
The memory T cells provide the immune system with a memory of past infection, so the body knows what to do if the same or similar infection shows up again in the body. The regulatory T cell. It used to be called the suppressor T cell. The major role of this T cell is to suppress autoreactive T cells that did not get the message to stop fighting an infection once the infection is gone. The natural killer T cell bridges the adaptive immune system with the innate immune system. And finally, we have the gamma delta T cell. This T cell specifically and quickly responds to a small, non-peptidic microbial metabolite. What this means is that T cells are important throughout your life, but they are really important when you're a kid because your body needs to learn what to do when infections and tumors happen. If your body doesn't know what to do, it can protect you from future infections that could happen throughout your lifetime. Oh, okay.